Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Luke chapter 16, jumping in verse 1. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward. And a steward is essentially a manager over something owned by someone else. Continuing verse 1. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest be no longer steward. We too will all have to give an account unto God of what we did with our time, our talents, our possessions, and influence. Romans 14, 12 says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Verse 3, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write fifty. For score. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. There are several things that we can learn from the unjust steward. First, he recognized and acted upon the fact that he was going to have to give an account. Unfortunately, this is already more than many Christians today. Many that claim to be Christians make decisions that suggest they don't really expect to have to give an account. He then took advantage of his position and knowledge to help his future. We should pursue the things of God in the same manner, making decisions and living intentionally, knowing the day is coming we will have to give an account. Look how effectively and passionately this world promotes and markets its businesses. Should the church not put more time and effort into spreading the gospel than Walmart or Amazon puts into their marketing? The world shouldn't be able to pursue financial success more passionately than you and I pursue kingdom success. Of course, their efforts shouldn't decrease, but our efforts should increase. McLaren said, go to the men of the world thou Christian, and do not let it be said that the devil's scholars are more studious and earnest than Christ's disciples. Matthew chapter 12, 36 says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse 9 says, And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Our resources can be useful for the kingdom. Clark comments on why it's called unrighteousness and says, Riches promise much and perform nothing. They excite hope and confidence and deceive in both. In making a man depend on them for happiness, they rob him of the salvation of God and of eternal glory. View money as a tool to be used to increase his kingdom, not as a goal to be obtained. Continuing verse 9, that when ye fell, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. The most important investments you can make are investments that are made with a focus on eternity. Stocks and Roth IRAs are nice, but tithes and offerings are far superior. Verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you trust the truest riches? Being faithful in tithe and offering is the beginning. It is the least. If you want God to use you in some great way, um, but struggle to remain faithful in these areas, well, now you know your next steps to work on. I've heard it said in reference to the missions field, some go by giving and some give by going. But I believe all that are led by God to give by going have already gone by giving first. Verse 12, And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Recognize that what we have belongs to God already. 
Verse 13, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Serving money is not a specific financial status. You can have no money at all and still serve it. It is about what has your heart, God or money. Verse 14, and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him or turned their noses up at him. Verse 15, and he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. While man can be fooled, God cannot be fooled. The Pharisees liked to display things that made them highly esteemed among other men, but the state of their hearts, which is what God saw, was wicked. Verse 16, the law and the prophets were unto John since the time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fell. This new covenant did not neglect or do away with the law. Verse 18, Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So we're given an example of something from the law. And it says marriage is still binding. This shows us just because we are under a new covenant does not mean the law is just done away with. Verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day, or he eated and consumed expensive and exotic foods. Verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Second Corinthians 5, 8 says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Verse 23 says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Of course, this is the rich man. This seems to be like a waiting place until the final judgment, as seen in Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 13. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Then after this final judgment, being cast into the lake of fire, along with death and hell. Revelation 20, 14 to 15 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Continuing on verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. The rich man went from exotic and expensive foods to just desiring a drip or drop of water. Verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Thank you for joining upon this rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless.